to give you documentations, girl. I Oh my God, that I do. Somebody please say it ain't so. There's some shady rumors coming out of the ATL that Rich Homie Kwan's father allegedly fainted when he seen the body. And when he came to, all he could do was go inside the house and pray. He didn't even go to the hospital with Kwan. And now the funeral is coming around the corner. They don't know if he's mentally stable or not to attend the funeral. So I'm going to need for all of y'all to say a prayer for Rich Homie Kwan's father, his family, his kids, and everybody that really loved this man. Without further ado, let's get into this presentation. I mean, just respectful. I don't mean any disrespect That's That's by us at all, but I mean, there are in this era we live in now, mm -hmm. there's so many people saying so many different things on social. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know this just happened. Do you guys have any idea of what happened yesterday? I mean, I have no idea at this time. Basically, I'm waiting on the toxicology report. I don't know. You don't I don't know. I, um, when I got there, he was being bought out on a stretch. Okay. So, um, and once they went to the hospital with my son, I immediately went in the house and started praying. Yeah. It's so unfortunate his father didn't even make it to the hospital with Quan because he was so devastated, so hurt. There's reports that he fainted when he seen the body and when he came to, all he could do was go in the house and pray for the best for Quan. His father is hurting right now, so I need y'all to say some prayers for this man. It's looking like it's looking like he's not trying to get all of the details. He's just trying to maintain and keep a straight head because this is so devastating. While the rest of the world is mourning Quan from a fan standpoint, his father is mourning him from a father's standpoint. And that's what makes this so sad and so devastating to Quan and his entire family. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm like everybody else. I have to wait and see. I don't want to speculate. Um, I stand on principles. I stand on values. I won't lie. I won't lie. And if it's something that can prevent. I mean, you're, you're, his, you're his father, but it sounded like he looked at you as uh, a mentor and, and really like a best friend. Like. Yeah, yeah we, we had a, um, a unique relationship because we were father and son. But we had a relate like like he called what well, we called each other my best friend a lot of people are applauding this man for being good friends with his son but a lot of people are condemning this man for allowing his son to take drugs even though they had a best friend type of relationship it's sort of like his father never encouraged his son to stop the drug use, to stop with the lean, to stop with the pills. I'm not saying that he never asked his son to quit doing these things, but it's damn near like he condoned it. There's countless interviews where Quan speak on his drug addiction. Everybody knows that he was on drugs, including his father. I don't know if they ever tried to intervene, but to get to this point... And to be so casual with his son about his drug use, a lot of people are blaming this man for the passing of Quan. But me, I just want to say rest in peace to Quan. And also, once again, I want to say pray for his father. But at the same time, for all the people out there watching, if you have kids dealing with narcotics, please let your kids know to let the drugs go because you don't want to faint when you're at a funeral or when you see your child laid out on the stretcher due to an OD or whatever the case was with Kwan. We still don't know. His father don't know exactly what happened, but it's a possibility that he OD'd. And if he did, a lot of people are pointing the finger at his father, saying that he may be the reason why Kwan is no longer here with us. We spoke daily. We spoke several times. Um, the day before he passed, I looked at my phone. We were on the phone like 11 times. Wow. Um, we had a, we had a, we had a, we had a bond, you know, we had a bond. Like, I grew up without my father. So I knew that if I ever had kids, I was going to be in their lives. And I've been in his life since day one up until he passed. To be in someone's life every day of their life and never try to intervene and stop the drug use, slap the activist out of his hand, tell him no more dope, no more lean, no more weed. No more pills. It got to hurt real bad right now to see how everything unfolded. All of the chances and opportunities he had to step up and say stop. Now, don't get me wrong. Quan was a grown man. 
when he passed. She was 34 years of age. But if you ask any parent out there, no matter how old your child get, your child is still a child to you, it's still your baby boy, your baby girl, or whatever the situation may be. As a parent, it's your responsibility to at least put some good game into your child's ear, let them know what's wrong and what's right. So we don't know if his father taught him right from wrong, and I'm pretty sure he did. This man was in his child's life, but was he a great influence to his child? Did he steer Kwan in the right direction? There's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up in this interview that we have to question, and by no means am I trying to place the blame on Kwan's father. If you ask me, I would place the blame on society for condoning this type of stuff, for celebrating this type of stuff, for buying his records knowing that he was on drugs before he passed. People said he was washed up, he was trash, people called him a junkie. They said all different types of messed up things about Quan. But his father was the main person in his corner and never, well, I can't say he never tried to stop him from his drug use, but at the same time, we all see the aftermath of his drug use. And his father was there firsthand. He said he spoke with this man several, 11 times a day. Did the conversation ever come up about his health? Was he ever concerned about any of that stuff? That's the question that I want to ask. If I had the opportunity to speak with this man, that's the questions I would ask. So yeah, we had a unique bond, you know. Um, uh, um, he also was a father, right? Yes, yes, he has um, five kids. I have um, four grandsons and one granddaughter. Um, and he had just started to gravitate to being a father. We had just had a conversation and he told me, Dad, you know, I'm getting this parenting thing down now. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like accepting it. And it's, it's crazy because this past summer, he had all of his kids with him. And he was happy because I don't think he had ever had just all of them over a course like they were there for like 30 days. And he had them, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, maybe God knew, you know. So before Quan passed, he was able to spend time with his kids for 30 days and I'm pretty sure it was a beautiful experience for not only him, but for his kids and the whole family. They got a lifetime of memories out of that 30 days to where they were all together. I'm pretty sure he got different baby mamas, so these kids may not see each other every day. They might get together during the summer or whenever they can, but I'm pretty sure that time they had with their dad created a bond that's going to last a lifetime and for his father to be trembling and crying about this situation just goes to show that he knows what fatherhood is like. He loved his son and Quan loved his kids as well. And it's looking like now that Quan is no longer here, his father is gonna have to take on the role of not only granddaddy, but big pappy, big daddy. He's gonna be their father. Now, hypothetically speaking, God forbid, if Quan's kids suffered the same addictions that he had, will the grandfather be able to lead those kids in the right direction? Can they go to grandpa to get some advice about addiction? Or will he just laugh it off and play the best friend like how he did with Quan? I'm not trying to beat up on this man, but it's very unfortunate what happened to Quan. And if he wasn't the best father, and which I think he was because they had an amazing relationship according to him and Quan, but do y'all believe he'll be a good grandfather, especially if his kids, his grandkids is dealing with narcotics? We can tell me about his childhood and how he grew up. And the Qantas Lamar, he grew up, um, he indicated over in East Atlanta, um, played football and baseball, all coming up out on Old National. Played baseball up until his 12th grade year at McNair. Had a scholarship, got there, say he got home, sick and came home. Um, got in some trouble, went to jail. Came home, told me he wanted to be a rapper. I was like, you know, that's a slippery, slippery slope. Yeah. And I encouraged him to um, go to engineering school 
but he was like, Dad, I want to be a rapper. And he stuck to it. And he took off from there. And he took off. I think what really hurts me is that me and my son had a conversation where it's like as artists, you're more appreciated in death than you are alive. Mm. And unfortunately, I'm seeing it. Now that he's gone, the love is everywhere. How should he be remembered? That he was a trendsetter that he made hits. And I used to tell him it's a difference in making songs and making hits. Mm. And he made hits. And I know that his music will live on forever. And I know as far as the city of Atlanta goes, he's a legend. I taught him humility. I taught him to stay grounded. But you have to call an ace an ace and a spade a spade. And my son is one of the greatest artists that came out of Atlanta, a true lyricist. I've been in the studio with my son and I seen him just go in the booth with no pen and paper and make hits like that's God-given talent. So I just want them to remember that back to him professionally, is, was he working on any projects that were coming? Yes, what was, like, yes. A lot of people are talking like he had some stuff that was really Yes, good. yes, we, um, we had just completed, I think it's 20 or 25 song project. And we were in the process of um, scheduling, shooting two videos off the project, um, a feature from 2 Chain mm -hmm. and a feature from Plies and um, we had planned, we had two shows in Miami this weekend. This weekend? This weekend coming up. And we were supposed to fly out tonight, and he had said that we was gonna try to get in touch with Plies and shoot a video while we were there to the Plies song. And him and 2 Chain had been in communication about getting the schedules together to shoot the um, video to the songs that they had. So, yeah, yeah, he, ha he has a, like, artists tend to take music to a sense that they're their babies. Rest in peace to big homie Quan. It's very unfortunate that he passed away in this manner. And for his father to come out and speak on the situation is very touching and heartbreaking. And the rumors about him not being able to handle seeing his child gone is even more heartbreaking than anything. Like I said, I just want to ask the people out there to pray for Quan, his father, his family. He left behind five kids. His baby mother was devastated on the 911 call. So my heart is heavy, man. His father needs all the prayer he can possibly get. I know he's thinking to himself, if he could have did something to make a difference, if he could have did something to make a change, an intervention or whatever the case is. And a lot of people will argue the reason why he didn't do that is because Quan was the breadwinner. He was the one getting the bag. If he needed some money, he can go to Quan to get the money. It's sort of like he never wanted to get on his bad side. But regardless, there's a lot of black males out here that don't have a father in the picture, that don't have a male that they can go to and talk to. Quan had that, somebody he could talk to every day and still wound up passing, allegedly due to an OD. We don't know. We're still waiting on the coroner's report. A lot of people believe it was OD. Me? It could have been anything. It could have been foul play. He was going up for the YSL Rico trial. They was going to put him on the stand. So somebody could have really got at him. And his entourage, they could have got paid off. I'm going to be putting videos up of Quan's living situation. He had some sketchy characters living with him, man. I'm pretty sure any of them dudes that was living in his household would have easily took a bag just to take him out of the game we don't know man i got so much love for y'all i want to thank y'all for tuning in make sure y'all do me a favor hit that like button subscribe to the channel also hit that notification button got so much love for y'all i risk my motherfucking life uh, 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 risk my life to give you documentations girl I risk my life to give you documentations girl I risk my life to 
give you Documentations, girl, I risk my life to give you Documentations, girl, I Got the jocks. I'm keeping it funky like some socks. Ponytail with the box. And my cell phone look like a box. Try not to get shell shot when I start busting out the docks. I got secret video tapes of your mom cussing out your pops. All over a box of corn pops. This rhythm got your pop 